What's up, everybody? My name is Russ, rwgresearch.com. It's time. This is the fifth installment of the Zero Electric Motorcycle, and almost all of this video is completely time lapse. So sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. I'm going to do some voiceover, maybe play a little music in the background. We'll see. But this video is uh, probably 20, 25 minutes long, trying to speed up the time lapse but give you enough detail along the way because I'm going to insert some pictures during the time lapse so you can actually see what I've done. So it's going to, yeah, just be interesting. So hang in there, enjoy this video of me building a battery out of 240 individual lithium iron phosphate cells. Here we go. Okay, and here we are. Just a little CAD drawings for you, just something to look at. I did a lot of work in here, but then ended up changing it slightly. So here I'm actually scraping off or removing with uh, some chemicals the sticky stuff that was on the factory part of the battery so that when I tack weld, it actually works well. Here I'm marking the battery connections and parts and pieces that I'm going to cut. And this is nickel strips, so if you use a razor blade and you score it, then you can kind of slightly pry at the uh, score mark and you can end up breaking it quite nicely. It's actually the best method I've used because otherwise if you cut into the battery, you'll short the battery and it causes some major problems, as you can imagine. So I'm just cutting all these up, making them into individual pieces so I can fold the battery up into the shape and uh, have all the connections made as I wish later on. So yeah, pretty straightforward stuff, but you know, you got to do it. It's kind of dangerous, but it worked out well. So here I'm just kind of stacking things and figuring out where I'm going to put them, make sure everything's going to fit, uh, glue in the pack onto the other pack. There's a piece of fiberglass and paper between there. So I'm just kind of making it the way the factory made it so it's pretty well all consistent. Here I'm measuring up the nickel strips that I'm going to need, cutting all the nickel strips out, then I end up flattening all the edges, measuring up as much as I can and you know doing everything in advance here so that I can prepare myself for the tack welding. So getting some ideas, making sure it's going to work, checking the fit, getting all the nickel strips. It's a lot of a lot of stuff going on, but the thing you got to remember, these batteries are fully charged, and this is a super dangerous operation because uh, any little short problem later is going to cause me massive problems. Here you can just see some pictures that I took along the way. Feel free to pause the video and take a look, closer look at what's going on here. So here I start the tack welding process. Um, I did some tests and had some problems, and then I kind of dialed in my tacking, and then uh, just went at it, just just one at a time, taking my time. I did tack weld way more than I needed, just due to the fact that the tack welds weren't tacking quite as nice as I would have liked. So I tacked them excessively. And then uh, just took my time, put one piece on here, put the bands around, folded the batteries, and then took the bands, uh, nickel strips there, folded them up onto the secondary part of that, just tack welded it all together. Here is where the little incident did when I, you know, started this process. I just didn't want this to happen when I was actually tacking the battery because it did put a hole in that test battery. So I tacked a bunch all over the place. Took pictures about every time I quit for the night. This took about a week and a half during the evenings for a couple hours every evening. Here I uh, shorted out the battery and did a little oopsie with my thumb, but don't worry, didn't hurt. Just the overskin calloused there. So that's the first night. Got the first part done, and here I added the second strips because, see, if, if you look closely, you'll understand that I have to strip them or tack the strips on here and then fold the battery over and then put the straps or the nickel uh, nickel strips back up to the secondary part and then tack or whatever I have to do. And, I, and basically, you can't take this battery back apart. So I had to sort of build it in a modular fashion here, one tack weld at a time. Getting this back apart is almost impossible. So there's the pictures of that evening's work. Turned out pretty nice, can't complain. Then I start working on the batteries for the top. See, one thing you got to remember is you have to balance out all the current. So the current is flowing through this battery, and if you have a weak spot in the battery, that's all the amount of current you're going to get out of it. That part of the battery is going to heat up. So there's some parts where I put way too many, or I should say excessively, nickel stripped it, and then other parts where I didn't put nearly as much. So here's the top. Basically, tack, attach those two together and folded them in half. Then I went ahead and attached permanently 
glued here the factory pack onto my makeshift made up pack test fit everything make sure it's going to fit and uh, then we started working on the top so as you can see i actually grabbed some of that really thick uh banding from the other battery that i took apart and started making some heavier gauge uh, connection points here and what that allowed me to do you know is just uh, connect these batteries in thicker spots where i needed it to get that current flow that i was telling you nice and even throughout the battery now i do have like a solder pin torch that runs on uh uh, some gas here and it just wasn't hot enough so I ended up getting my torch out and just heating things up with the torch so here's the top pack just kind of preliminarily connected together kind of figured out what I wanted to do and I just put it all in here to make sure it was going to fit checked everything double checked everything and then actually halfway through this process I realized that I glued the top batteries on like backwards and upside down I had to flip everything over pry them off there's a little diagram of how it's connected and it's kind of funny because, yeah, I pulled it all off. Then I put some different strips on the outside. Put some heavier gauge stuff around there. Put the nickel strips on there. Put it all back together. Then I had to solder it on the bottom side, which was kind of a nightmare. Ended up getting all that figured out. Luckily, the way that that's soldered, there's only three batteries on each end connecting the circuit. The rest of them are all connected on top. So the connection point doesn't have to be super heavy duty. However, this connection point that I'm working on here needs to be pretty heavy duty because it supplies the entire amount of current through the pack and it's kind of a weak spot so i ended up taking that um, heavy braiding from the other battery i took apart filling it with solder and then ended up uh, heat, taking the torch and heating everything up if you heat it up real quick and solder the connections real fast you won't damage the batteries but typically you don't want to solder all your connections to the batteries because that de de degrades their uh, whatever it takes part of the uh, battery capacity out of it because you're heating the battery up you're damaging it so if you do it quick you can do okay here i got it all together put it in there just to see if it was going to fit make myself smile there it was 52 volts little cleanup got a little messy there so i took everything back out now uh the final main battery connection between the two factory well one of the factory packs and my made up pack this is what I'm working on here. So if you can see, I got out my really big soldering iron that I got. Huge guy. It's like 1,100 watt or something. It's really big. Man, that soldered well. Should I should have remembered I had that previously. Typically, I don't use that for a whole lot. But uh, this, it worked really well. So I put the big fuse on top, connected everything to it, put it back in here, just kind of test fit everything as usual. There's the giant mess I made. There's the top soldered connections. There's the battery connection where I got the fuse in line. It's a 300 amp fuse. I ended up kind of switching that around, but still kept the fuse in there. Just put it in a different spot later. So now that I know it's all working, all good, I ended up taking it back apart because, well, I reworked that fuse here. It's what I'm doing. But I took the whole thing back apart and now sort of started working on the battery management wires. So these wires are individually looking at each individual cell there's 15 in series uh, sorry there's 15 in parallel there's 16 in series and I'm looking at each one of those parallel connections because I got to make sure that the voltage is balanced between them so I have to add a wire on each one of those individual packs of 15 that are at 3.2 volts and monitor them as they charge as they discharge and make sure that we never go over or under our rated battery voltage otherwise if you kill one section of, of those batteries it's as you can see almost impossible to replace just a few of those batteries in this pack you have to pretty well destroy the whole thing to do it so as I continue here um, I put a fuse in every single one of these lines before I connected it to my battery management system and this just helps protect the entire thing plus protect the ban battery management they're five amp fuses you'll see some pictures here in a second of these tiny fuses I just basically soldered them in line and um, it worked out pretty good so I did one half there it is I hot glued everything I had to cut little notches in the fiberglass and then glued those wires in place because the pack fits perfectly in that plastic housing they have to fit exactly so I had to notch them out and get them in there but yeah this was actually a very tedious time-consuming and exhausting process 
Um, but it went by pretty fast. Basically, I cut the wire, put on a little fuse, put the other side of the wire on, heat shrinked it, uh, attached it to the pack, ran it up the side, hot glued everything in place, and then I did the next one. Obviously, I had to do this, what, 17, 18 times uh, across each, the you know, across the whole entire pack. So it's, uh, yeah, very uh, exhausting. So hot glued everything, put a bunch of uh, extra protection here and there. That paper I'm using that you see there is a cellulose paper. It's pretty thick. It's designed for using, for making transformers and stuff. And uh, then came the actual wiring of the BMS harness. I went ahead and just used the factory harness. I did double heat shrink and then used Kapton tape around those connections because I do not trust those uh, heat shrink alone. Sometimes if they do get warm or there's a solder joint that has a little pokey piece of solder, it will poke through the side and cause you some pretty bad problems. So double heat shrink and Kapton tape. There's the little fuse. You can see my solder roll next to it. They're tiny little guys. And uh, that's a pretty crappy solder job picture. I had some better ones, had some worse ones. But ultimately, if you break them, uh, putting them in, they're just ceramic. So if you push them and you snap them, they break. you got to take them back out. I only broke two. Or I broke three in the process. One that I had to replace on the battery after I got done. I realized when I pushed it in there in the hot glue, I broke it. So there's the <clears throat> BMS system connected to it and there's I redid the fuse you can see how I put it off to the side because the cover wouldn't fit on so that was pretty well the majority now it's time to actually test fit it and then uh, here we're gonna actually take some measurements so whoo that was a lot of time oh this entire video has been time-lapse which is actually good it gives me some music I can play and have some fun so here's the deal the BMS battery management system is complete. I'm about ready to basically plug this into the BMS board. That's a uh, advanced board. It is a balancer board. That's all it does is balance the cells with each other. So all of the cells are equally balanced when this thing uh, is finalized. And the important thing here is that this is not a heat resistive wasting element balancer, but instead this actually takes charge from one of the higher batteries and puts it into the lower batteries. So my question is, well, they call this an active balancer. My question is, is how efficient really is it? Uh, I don't know how efficient it will be, but I know that I can get some good data because I've never balanced these cells. They could all be completely slightly out. I think uh, most of them are pretty good, but the, between the two packs I took apart, there's going to be some difference. So they're all going to transfer back and forth. So I want to take measurements of everything now, and then after it's uh, done balanced, I want to take measurements again and see what the total pack voltage is and what it went to. This isn't the best method of measuring um, because there's lots of error going on and there's lots of things to think about like the pack voltage should stay the same but maybe the cells are different, the capacities are different, it's transferring, the voltage is different. It's, a, it's really a complicated question to be fair. But let's go ahead and just take measurements of each one of these. So this wire, the first wire here is ground. As we go all the way to the end, we get full power. So right now my ground lead is over there on the ground. The total pack voltage is 52.4. If I put it here, that's my zero. So I'm not even, well, I'll say these out loud. So the first one, I'm going to just go all the way down, and then we'll come back and measure each cell pack individually. So right now, we got 3.28, 6.56. 9.84, kind of flickered there. 49.2 and total pack voltage is 52.5 so I'm gonna go ahead and try to measure each each cell 
individually. This is kind of tricky because if I short something out, it's going to be bad news bears. Let me actually switch leads here in my hand. Okay, so we already measured technically the first pack. 3.28. 3.28, 3 3.25, 3.25, 3.28, 3.28, 8, is it pretty balanced? 3 3.28, 3.28, 3.27, 3.27, 3.28, 3.28, 3.28, 3.28, 3.28. Wow, this pack is extremely well balanced, so that's great. That means the old balancer was working properly and the two packs were roughly the same voltage and balanced well, so that's perfect. So let's go ahead and try plugging this in and hopefully uh, nothing blows up. Now I have no idea how this works internally except for how the inductive um, transfer happens here, but as far as these LEDs, I'm actually not 100% sure how these are supposed to work. If you want to look this guy up. There's a little JM17 cell battery balancing version 2.4. I think we're, as of now, and this is a 17B, um, which is a 16 cell. So, um, yeah, let's just plug it in and see what happens, shall we? It's actually really hard to get in. All right, so I realized that two of the wires were really messed up. I had to take them out, check them, bend them straight, take them out, check them, bend them straight. I don't know if this came from the factory like this or possibly I screwed it up, but yeah, it was not fun. Ended up getting it to work, but it still fit in there super tight. So, you know, it is what it is, but uh, yeah, those little wire connectors didn't seem uh, as robust as I would like. There we go. Now they're all in there. I'm going to go through and measure them all again and make sure they're actually working. And I believe because they're so darn close that they're not going to balance. So I think we're good. I'll double check it all, but looks like we got a good pack. And they're balanced well. Job done. We got to put it in the case now. Okay, so putting the battery back in its little pack, I ended up <clears throat> screwing on the uh, BMS system onto that little piece of plastic. And uh, it gets warm, but not too overly hot. Later on in a couple videos from now, you'll see I checked the uh, balancer. It is working. It's doing its job. And it seems like it's a good little unit. So, yeah, if you ever wanted to know what it took to actually put together one of these packs, that's pretty well the process there's uh, more to it depending on if you use a different type of BMS system this isn't a true uh, full-blown BMS system this is just a balancer later when I get it in the mail I'll be adding the rest of the system where it will shut off if it's overcharged undercharged pulling too much sell too low etc etc that will be in a later video so look for it other than that yeah enjoy the last bit of this video thanks for watching Welcome back. This is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something, by the way. And if you have some comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, everything else, put them down in the comments. Leave me a thumbs up, thumbs down. I guess you're probably subscribed if you're watching this video. If not, you can do that as well. Thanks for watching. As always, read the Bible more. God bless you guys. Peace out.